Hey guys, and welcome back. This is Autofocus. I'm Steven Streeter, and we're going to be taking a look at how to make some bubbles. So take a look at this scene here. This is Melissa Pena, a musical artist out of Mexico, and she's showing a pipe to, you guessed it, Flounder from The Little Mermaid, a musical by Disney from 1989. That's so long ago. Let's take a look at the footage before the bubbles. So she sent me this footage and I just thought to myself, I need bubbles coming out of that box and out of that pipe and we're gonna make it happen. I had no idea how to do it at the time and that's why I'm sharing this video to help anyone out there who maybe wants to put some bubbles into one of their scenes and they're just like not really sure how to do it and make it interact within the scene elements. And so let's take a look at how it looks uh, from here. Okay, so we're going to make that, except for minus the, the sound effects. We're going to, basically, the sound effects are something that you add after you create the effect uh, in your timeline here. You can do that with a cup of water and a straw with your mic, and you just blow into that and create your own sound. Or you can, you know, go online, grab yourself some stock audio, and edit it to the, the scene. So let's take a look at how we make those bubbles within the scene. So we want to right-click here, selecting both of our clips, so they both go into After Effects, and we're just going to boop. Right click, go to replace with After Effects composition. Okay, now that our clips are in After Effects, we need to find a place in this first clip where we're going to start our tracking. And that's gonna be right about there. Now we need some null objects. So let's add a null object, we'll duplicate it, and then we will select those three, split them with Command Shift D, and delete those two front ends. Then we're gonna to go to the back end of that same clip and we're going to split them here and we're going to delete that one. Uh, that was a slip of the finger. All right, so now let's do some naming here. So we're gonna name this one box. The next one uh, we're gonna name box tracker. This one we're going to name fish eye. And we're going to name this one Fish I too. All right, now we're good to go. Let's go ahead and track our friendly neighborhood box by uh, selecting our motion tracker. Make sure we have our source selected. Click motion track. We'll just adjust our tracking point uh, and we'll put it on the corner here. We have a nice little square making it easy to track and we'll track forward from here. Okay. Our point did not fall off the track, so that is a good track. Let's go ahead and track back. That sucked. <laughs> Let's try that one more time. We'll just adjust our point real quick, making it a little bit bigger. Now let's go ahead and track back again. Ah, like gangbusters, it worked again. Okay, so perfect. Let's go ahead and make sure our target is correct. Ah, see, we got to check box tracker. Click OK then click apply. And if you'll notice, we do have our box tracker and we're gonna need those position points. So we'll click P to reveal them. And then we're going to track one more time this clip on our friend Flounder's eye. So let's hit track motion, adjust our tracking point. And what's great about this is we don't have to worry about the scale or rotation, simply the position and we're going to track that eyeball and let's go ahead and track back. And then we'll put our playhead back where we started and track forward again. Okay, that looks good. So let's go ahead and hit um, edit target, make sure we have the correct target selected, click okay, and then apply. All right, so that looks good. If we click on that, we should see our tracking points and we'll hit P just to reveal those. We're going to need them a little bit later. Okay, so now finally, huh, so much tracking going on, we need to track our friend Flounder again on the second clip. All right, let's go ahead and uh, select that pupil again, nice big round pupil, and we'll track forward. Okay, that looks great. So now let's track back. All right, so again, we did an excellent job here. So we'll make sure that we have the correct target. It is correct, and we'll click apply. 
click OK. And we have our null object with all the tracking points. So go ahead and hit P for position because we will need those. And we're going to go ahead and create our first solid. And we're going to call it bubbles. Love those bubbles. All right, now we have our bubbles. Let's go ahead and change the color to blue so we don't get confused and we'll shrink the front just to where we're going to have those bubbles starting out just to make it a little bit easier. And now we need to add some effects. What effects you ask, I will tell you. We want, first we want to have foam. And there we have it. And the next one we want to have is bulge. Throw bulge on there. And in order for these to do what we want them to do, we need to attach them to our null object. So we will take our producer point, option or alt click on the stopwatch, and we will pick whip it to our box, box tracker position. There we go. Okay. And then finally we want to do our bulge center and we will option click or alt click and we'll pick whip it from bulge to our fish eye position. Okay, so now those are laid out where we want them. Um, let's just go ahead and adjust them real quick. Now we have the bulge on the eye. We don't want the bulge necessarily on the eye. We want it more on the whole body. So in order to do that, let's go ahead and increase the bulge to roughly the size of our friend's body. And then we will select all of the keyframes for our fish eye. You can hear my dogs in the background barking at nobody. <laughs> That's what they do in the middle of the night, bark at nobody, and then I wake up and check on them and then there's nobody to be seen. Okay, so that looks good. And we'll just check our... All right, I like it. So now let's go ahead and raise that up to 1.5 and we'll do the radius about, I don't know, 0.3 and we'll see how that works in the future. Um, now we want to go to our bubbles. They are coming out of the wrong area of the box. We want them coming from the inside. So let's go ahead and select our keyframes for our box tracker, and we will adjust them to the location of where we want them to be coming out of. So that looks about right. Uh, we can't really tell if it's right or not, simply because um, you know, we can't really see the bubbles and they're going all over the place because we haven't adjusted the settings. So let's start adjusting those settings and let's go ahead and make it rendered so we can see what they look like. Oh man, those are gorgeous. So let's go to our physics and we'll change this to three. Uh, now they're going in a more of a precise direction. Let's just kind of rotate that. Sort of going towards flounder here, our buddy. Um, <clears throat> that looks pretty good. Let's just check that out. Okay, so now what we need to do is, obviously when she's here, the bubbles won't be as aggressive as all that. So let's go ahead and do a little stopwatch, take it down to zero, click forward a bit, and then we'll take it back up to one. Actually, let's go about right there to one. Okay, and then we'll go to the end roughly and take it back down to zero because you know there's not a never ending amount of bubbles coming out of that box it's got to stop at some point so let's see how that looks okay that's more realistic i like it all right now what we need to do is let's go ahead and finish adjusting our bubbles here uh, we have our initial speed done uh, let's take this to one for the wind speed that's going to attack them as soon as they come out and we will go down to our rendering settings. So we want these to be solid on top. Um, we want our bubble texture layer to be the texture layer of the clip that they are on, which is seven. And the same thing with our environmental map. We'll do it to seven as well. And we'll just adjust these to 0.6 and we'll do this one to 0.6 as well. And if we look at them, let's see. All right, let me just show you what it looks like here. You can see our singer's face right in that bubble. I just like it to be not as precise as all that. So let's go back to 0.6. Okay, so now what we wanna do is we have um, a fair amount of bubbles coming in, but I think I feel 
in the my heart of hearts that we could have a little bit more, but maybe not quite as big. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna duplicate that layer by hitting Command D, and we're gonna just adjust those bubbles so that they're tiny bubbles. But first, let's go ahead and rename it to Tiny Bubbles. And we will go to our bubble settings. We'll take it down to 0.1, and we will just adjust some of the physics so it's moving a little bit differently. We'll take this up to four. This we wanna just, okay, we'll take it to 37, and our wind speed we can take to uh, 0.5, and let's just change this over over here to about, I don't know, 80. And so let's see, that should be, still be roughly the same direction, but moving slightly differently. Um, let's see. Let's adjust that a little bit more. There we go. Okay, let's try it one more time. Okay, maybe that's just a little bit too small. Let's try point, let's try point two. All right, now let's check it one more time. Okay, yeah, that's better. Okay, now we have a good amount of bubbles coming out and they're all flying in the face of our friend Flounder. So now what we can do is we can take these, duplicate them, and we're gonna extend them because we need a jump cut. So let's just see exactly where we want that jump cut to occur. I think about right there is good. So let's go ahead and shrink those down. Then we'll move them forward and we'll drag it out. Okay, now in this jump cut, we want to make sure that we have everything where we need it. The first thing we need to change is the location of our bulge. So let's option click that to remove our setting and then option click again to add a new one by taking our pick whip down to our fish eye two. Okay, so now if we check out our bulge here, it's right on our friend. Let's make it a little bit bigger. There we go. Let's see how it affects the bubbles. Okay, this bubble, I want it to come up here. So let's adjust our physics for that a little bit. There we go. Let's take it closer right there. Okay, let's see how that works. Okay, that looks like it can be fun, but we want to adjust our bulge here. Let's just see if we can just move the location just a tad. All right, so now it looks like the bubble is just resting right on Flounder's chin or face there. Okay, let's see how that looks. Ah, beautiful. Okay, so from this point, we need to get some bubbles coming out of this pipe. So let's go down to our pipe clip and we are going to, okay, we're gonna split it right there. Command Shift D and we'll take it to that point and split it at that point. Okay, so now we're gonna be dealing with this guy. So let's go ahead and rename it to pipe and we'll duplicate it. And this is going to be the layer that we make a mask out of so that we have the bubbles popping out of the pipe. So let's click, grab our pen tool and we'll just make a rough mask around the pipe. The most important part is this area right here. So let's just make a nice little curve. So it's like the edge of the pipe and that looks good. Let's go ahead and just move these around. All right, we got it. Now let's grab our selection tool. We click M so that we can hit that stopwatch on the mask and just adjust where the mask lands. We gotta track it um, back and then take it to the end of the clip and move our mask there. Now let's just travel back and forth through the clips to make sure there's nowhere other adjustments needed. Right there, looks like it needs to be adjusted. And I think we have it. Yep, looks good. Okay, 
So now what we need is we need our bubbles. So let's create a new solid. We'll call this one type bubbles. Click enter and we'll move it down just beneath our mask. And we'll change the color to fuchsia and we'll shrink it down to join the front end of our mask. Now, now you see all we see is the mask now and a couple bubbles here. So what we need to do is we need our effects. And we are good to go. So first thing we need to do is we need to take our bubbles and we need to keyframe our producer. Um, let's go ahead and take it down to zero so we don't have anything. And then up to 0.2. And then let's go down until we see some bubbles coming out. Right there. And then we'll take it to zero again. Now let's get those rendered out so we can see what they look like. Okay, we have one problem here. They're disappearing right at this point, which is because of this guy. So let's move him underneath our mask or our bubbles and there we go okay so we have our bubble being created we want a little bit more than that so let's go to our producer keyframes and we'll just there now we have two okay all right looks good so now we need those bubbles instead of coming out of her palm we need them coming out of the pipe so let's see what we can do about getting them out of the pipe. They're being produced right at that moment. So now let's take our producer, bring it right over here, and we need to shrink that producer to where it's zero. So let's see. Okay. All right, perfect. That's when they're coming out. So now let's just change their direction with the physics. Take this up to three, change this to zero. And let's see how that looks. Let's go ahead and shrink this down so we can see what's happening. All right, perfect. Okay, now let's go ahead and increase the size of those bubbles. First, let's go ahead and take the bubble growth speed and take it all the way to one. That way there's no growth at all. This is the final size that they will be. And then let's just increase that size to fill that pipe. Great. Next, let's grab the bulge effect and put our center right here on the pipe. Just going up a little bit and let's make it grow. There we go. And you'll see here that the bulge effect is pulling it, or pushing it away from the pipe, but we want it to pull it into the pipe. So let's go ahead and hit negative 2.5 and we'll adjust our radius here. Let's play it forward. Okay, we don't want that to happen right there. Okay, let's see. All right, now let's play that at full speed. Okay, I like how that looks. The only change I wanna make is the speed of these bubbles here. Let's slow them down a little bit. And the easiest way I've found to do that is by going into our physics and just increasing the viscosity a little bit. Let's see how that looks. Right there, okay. Now let's try it again. All right, people, I think we have it. Let's take a look, full speed, all the way through. All right, that's looking like gold. Time to take it back to Premiere. So let's jump over to Premiere, and then we will right click, 
and hit render and replace. And then if we look back at After Effects, and then we click OK. And there you have it. Bubbles, bubbles everywhere, but not a drop to drink. This has been fun. I hope you were able to get a feel for how you can create bubbles in your own projects in the future. To get a full understanding of how powerful the foam effect really is, you should check out Jake in Motion, Foam Effects and After Effects. He does a great job in giving an in-depth look at each setting and how they work. You can find the link in the description. I just can't get enough of those bubbles, people. Until next time, I'm Steven Streeter, and this is Autofocus.